Hi, in today's session, I'm going to talk about automating everything, a DevSecOps journey for OS images with Ansible. A couple of things about me. I'm the CTO for Cloud Native and RAS Solutions at IBM. I am a RAS certified architect and I build multi cloud environments for large customers. I also run a small home data centers for fun and profit, but since the uh, pandemic, I was uh, forced to get rid of a lot of the racks and the servers, and uh, I literally had to containerize most of my test environment. So I do most of my uh, testing and uh, builds on various cloud environments I can uh, scrounge together and abuse for uh, as little cost as possible. My base OS image automation journey started in 2010, um, when I took on the role of um, image architect for IBM's first Red Hat based cloud. Um, back then I was using a combination of Perl and various CI CD tools to automate the image build process, but it didn't really scale the way that I wanted to. Later on, as I discovered tools such as Ansible, um, things became a lot clearer that um, if you're trying to build a image automation framework, you need to have something like Ansible in there to ensure that everything is, you know, role-based, code-based, and very, very easy to use. Uh, here's an example workflow on how you can build and secure your images using, uh, using Ansible. First, you're going to store all of your image build ar ar artifacts and, you know, kickstart files and sysprep configuration in a source code repository. And whenever you have a, um, you know, security update trigger or a code change, something changes in that repository, then um, this will trigger Ansible Tower or Jenkins or some other system to start a new build. As part of your image build, you first need to provision your build environment. Uh, gone are the days when you can have this very, very large bare metal server or multiple systems ready as your build environment. You can now use Elastic Scaling. So if you're using Cloud System, you just provision that on demand and um, you can use Ansible to do that as well. Then you're going to trigger the actual OS image build. Um, here I'm using uh, Packer, and Packer is just a tool that um, lets me trigger the OS installation, so the kickstart process or KVM ver VMware virtual box, all of the engines behind it, and then pass on the post-install steps to Ansible. Uh, that's gonna update my image and secure it and install um, various VM, you know, VMR tools, QM, EMG, and so on. Then I'm passing it on to OpenSCAP for securing the image. So this also generates a bunch of Ansible um, code that's going to apply various profiles on top of my image. So I want to have, for example, a PCI profile. And then a, another build step may trigger for different images to install things such as middleware. So maybe I want to have a Python image or a web series image. Well, that's going to also be triggered through Transible as well. Last steps are to package the image, sign it, and upload it to an image store. And um, then you're going to want to test it, right? You don't want to push an image to production unless you've done at least some uh, automated testing and possibly some manual testing on it. And then you want to dismantle your build infrastructure and uh, clean up a bit. So for this case study, I'm using uh, OpenShift Virtualization, which is OpenShift Managed KVM. Um, but one thing that um, you should take out of this talk is that your image automation workflow should apply to all of the OS images that you're building. Are you building workstation images? Well, <laughs> go ahead, use Ansible Automate that. Are you building VMware images or AWS images, Azure images, IBM Cloud images, um, OpenStack images, RHV images? Well, chances are if you're a large company, you're probably building all of the above. Uh, and you can do yourself a favor by using the same system, the same pipelines to build images for all of these providers in similar ways. And you're going to be, you know, taking advantage of all of the common steps, like the patching of the image um, as part of that process. A couple of words about OpenShift virtualization, which we're using in this uh, particular example, is that it's basically libvirt, you know, KVM, uh, managed by Kubernetes. So OpenShift can manage a KVM-based virtual machine. So the image build process is very, very similar to that that you would use for KVM or um, OpenStack or Red Hat virtualization. 
And in fact, it's quite similar to some of the major cloud providers, you know, hyperscalers that also use KVM. Um, you do want to install a couple of things like cloud in it, but that's something um, something you want to include in your build process in the in the Ansible steps as well. Um, so, so it's an example. Your OpenShift virtualization image is going to be a QCOW2, so an image that you can build with you know, QMO tools, QMOMG. Um, and it's a sparse image that can be compressed, and it has things like a QMO guest agent. If it's a Windows machine, you want to use power virtualized drivers like the Vertio drivers, you'll need to install those. Um, you'll need to install Cloud in it if you want to uh, make that image useful, like give it an IP or set up a user after it's being provisioned. So you do want to set up this uh, set of Python tools inside the image, which let OpenShift or you know OpenStack, if you're using that, um, instead of um, OpenShift virtualization to customize the image after and major cloud providers are also use very something similar to cloud in it. And you'll want to then perform various install steps like securing and patching your uh, image on top. OpenShift virtualization is installed on top of OpenShift if you have a bare metal worker node. You can install it if you don't have bare metal worker nodes, but uh, nested virtualization is something you'll uh, enjoy using in any in any situation. Um, you can install it with a operator, which is a very, very simple and easy installation process. You go to the operator hub, you select install, and then you can create a, a hyperconverged kubevert cluster on the worker nodes that you're gonna um, have on your cluster there. And then within a project namespace, I like to create a separate project namespace for this, but you can mix and match workloads so you can have virtual machines side by side with functions as service and containers within the same namespace, you can start to create now virtual machines. Now there's different types of virtual machines. Uh, some of them are ephemeral and some of them are persistent. If you're setting up a um, immutable image or you know ephemeral image types within your build process, then you may wanna take a look at the uh, ephemeral images as well. Uh, in order to import images into OpenShift virtualization, you'll want to deal with the CDI, which is the Containerized Data Importer, which is a set of operators and tools that use QMOMG uh, under the hood to manipulate disk images, convert them from QCOW to RAW, uh, import them into your cluster. They take them from various places like a URL, so you can just give it you know, a URL or a S3 bucket, or you can even give it a container registry. Now a um, virtual OS image is not a container. So what gives, right? Um, it basically takes the QCOW image and it adds it into a um, empty container image under slash disk. So there's a bit of packing uh, that happens there in order for uh, QVert to consume, consume this image and the containerized data importer to, um, to use it. Um, from a topology perspective, what you need to, to think about here is that I'm building OS images, I'm placing them onto a store, which can be, like I've mentioned, some URL S3 bucket or a uh, container registry. And from there, everything else will happen inside OpenShift Vert. It'll take the image, it'll import it, and uh, you'll be able to test it or use it in, uh, in production. So before we jump into any automation project, we want to take a look at what exactly are we automating. So let's take a look at some of the uh, key build considerations or architectural decisions as we build these images. So first, the question is, do we build from scratch every time? So do we always install the operating system? Or do we want to start from a installed operating system image and then just run Ansible on top of it? Um, this is a very, very tricky decision. Personally, I prefer to build the image uh, from scratch every time, especially if I have changes on my Kickstarter file or um, I'm doing various um, updates. But if you're just installing minor revisions, or if you're always, you know, ver you're starting from RAW version 8.3, there is no real need to to rebuild that every time, and you can, you know, speed up your image build process by starting from a already installed OS image. And then you're just gonna run Ansible on top of that to install patch, configure uh, various things on top. Um, the second key question would be, 
how do you want to build uh, multi-platform images? So if you're building images from VMware, KVM, OpenStack, OpenShift, Vert, AWS, do I build one image and then I use, you know, QAM, EMG, Convert, or I perform various tricks on the final image? Or do I have a reproducible build process that just swaps out hypervisors uh, every time? And my, my preference is to start clean here and use a separate hypervisor as throughout the build chain. And that's why I'm using Packer uh, with, um, you know, VMware and KVM and VirtualBox or whatever I'm using as part of my build process to get a clean install and a clean build every time. There can be some issues with things like, you know, VMware tools or... Um, various other hardware configurations as you install that image during the conversion process you might like like you know bios or wefi issues as well um, also what goes into the post provisioning script is a key architectural decision here uh, the question is how much do you want to delegate to cloud init so cloud init is something that is triggered after you built your image and is now being provisioned by the hypervisor or the hyperscaler and you can have a patching step in there, right? That, that's perfectly fine. The problem with that is going to be slow and time consuming and you're creating a window of exposure during which your image is provisioned but not yet secure. Uh, personally, I like to include all necessary patches and have at least, you know, at least a weekly, if not uh, more often, updates on my cloud catalog. So, Every time I'm provisioning an image, I'm provisioning from the latest and greatest golden image. Um, so let's let's take a look first at what we need to set up the rigging, like the build infrastructure for this. A bare metal host is preferred. You want to have your hypervisor here, KVM or VMware Workstation can be a can be an option here if you want to go down that path. Or VirtualBox, it depends what type of images we're building. Again, here we'll be building images for OpenShift Vert. So we're going to go with KVM. And you want to have all the various uh, build tools set up on your environment. Obviously, this is a step you should automate, and I'm going to show you later how that uh, happens with Ansible. As part of your image build process, you want to automate as much as possible. So Kickstart is a great way to do that. You can create a Kickstart file where you have all of your operating system settings, and you always have a reproducible OS install install. Build. And you can use this prep for similar purposes with Windows as well. And there's other response files you can use if you're installing a non rel Linux operating system as well. Uh, for Windows, in a similar way, you'll see that uh, building the uh, OS image is a bit more tricky. You can use this prep, as I mentioned, to automate some of this um, process, but it is a bit more, more complex. You also need to download the uh, Vert.io. When, which for some reason seems to be in a container. So you need to download the container and extract these and install them on your uh, Windows system. It's, there's quite a complex process to get it set up. But what's more important here is the uh, post-install steps for Windows. They can be quite complex. Uh, for example, if you want to configure RDP access and install cloud in it as well, as well as perform various security settings as this will be a cloud image and just, you know, setting it up with RDP access uh, over the internet and provisioning on your cloud provider might not be wise if you haven't gone through the process of securing it. Once you have your image built, you want to sparsify it and convert it and create some checksums for it and sign it and upload it to your image store. Um, you may want to push it to container registry, as I've mentioned with OpenShift Vert. Um, there's a trick here that you, you start from scratch and you copy your image to slash disk, and then you can build your image and push it onto your container registry and OpenShift Vert can pick it up from there. You can also use Builder or Podman or whatever tool uh, to perform this build. It's, um, it's really the same result. You can also use Scopio uh, to copy Im images around. And once you have your image, then you can provision it within OpenShift. So you'll be able to, um, to use it like that. So now that we know how to use it, and we also know how to test it, right, to see if the image um, worked correctly. And you can also use this Vert CTL tool that comes with OpenShift uh, Vert to, to perform various operations on it. Um, then we'll be able to perform the last steps, you know, manual validation, we sign the image off, we push it into our, you know, final production registry. And you'd want to consider that this is a build process for a 
development project, right? So you want to have, you know, at least a development and a production environment. You don't just want to push off images straight into production without some level of validation. Um, you can now do the cleanup and deprovisioning of this, uh, this uh, environment. So the next step would be, now that we know the steps we need to perform, we're going to automate them with Ansible. And um, the steps here are fairly straightforward, and you can even use this to build other things than uh, uh, virtual machines. As most of the steps, like you know, install Mirror or install products or patch things, uh, you can use those roles again and again for other situations. Um, one interesting way to use Ansible is to install your virtualization tools. So KVM, VMware, or VirtualBox, they all have things like um, you know, VMware tools or you know, QMU uh, tools. So you can use Ansible to install those as well. It will detect the hypervisor that you're using and then it will, it will install them. Um, to set this up, I've collected, I've uh, created an Ansible collection. You can find it on Ansible Galaxy. It's, uh, um, it's here, Kvetti Mihai, that virtualization. And that you can uh, use this to do things like, you know, install KVM on your host, or you can install VMware, Packer, Vagrant, and you can even install VMware uh, or VM tools with, with uh, roles within this collection. Roles are created in a fairly straightforward manner. You have a customizable uh, variable file here with a list of packages that go into the uh, um, into the variable. Here I have packages. If you're doing it on another operating system, you can create you know a other operating system variable here and install the necessary tools. You don't you don't have to use um, RAL for your build host if uh, if that's your choice. And then we're going to install this package um, in a um, in a task, and of course, if you're installing other, on other operating system, you can make this role uh, generic, and you can have you know install Ubuntu, install whatever it is uh, to install the same kind of packages. You can also use um, <clears throat> a couple of tricks here. So, for example, uh, to include a specific file like VMware or KVM when Ansible will detect a specific type of virtualization is being used. Once we have everything in place, we can use um, Packer to trigger this process. So Packer starts with a, a JSON specification and then through WinRM or SSH, it will connect um, to the operating system that's being built on top of one of these builders, which can be, you know, KVM with libvir, VMware, AWS, whatever, uh, other hyperscaler here. And then it can call on Ansible as a provisioner. So Ansible will do most of the work while uh, Packer will kickstart the process of uh, booting your OS images and it will literally type in, you know, KS equals in the HTTP and it will point and create that uh, kickstart configuration if you're using kickstart as well. And then it can call a post processor, it can be a script, it can be um, packaging that application, it can be Ansible again to maybe, you know, package, create checksums and upload that somewhere as well. Uh, Packer also works with variables and builders. Here you can see, for example, I'm using a KVM builder, which can be used for all sorts of uh, um, builds, including AWS and OpenShift Vert. And it'll send a book command that's literally, you know, Super Mario codes up, wait, tab, insert this text. It'll simulate a human at the uh, Grab console there. Then it will run a number of provisioners. Here you can see you can run maybe Shell or you can run Ansible as a provisioner. Obviously, you want to focus on the Ansible provisional scripts uh, and a bunch of uh, post processors that you see here. Uh, once you run it and you can run multiple builds in parallel, you can connect and you can see what's going on. I'm using VirtualBox here because it pops up um, and it's very easy to see, but you can also RDP um, into this if you're very fast and catch it, um, catch it in the boot process if you're using KVM uh, or anything else. Next steps here would be to use something like OpenSCAP. Uh, which lets you set up a security profile. So if you want to set up you know, PCI for your operating system, it will generate the uh, necessary playbooks and it will make your uh, image in a way which is uh, which can remediate itself uh, in an automatic fashion. Uh, you can install OpenSCAP, it will generate a Ansible playbook and it will let you apply those remediations. Like any good Ansible role, you want to test it. So I suggest looking into Molecule, which lets you create either KVM or container-based test environments for Ansible playbooks to see if your roles work first, but you still want to do some additional testing 
um, later on, obviously, as you um, as you provision and test the image themselves. Uh, you can also take a look at Cookie Cutter, which is a way to create templates for these roles. So as you're building these roles, a good way to, to set them up in a similar fashion with tests and everything is to use uh, Cookie Cutter te templates. And once you have everything in place, you can use Ansible Tower, which lets you orchestrate and create uh, more and more complex, let's say, workflows with all of the steps um, to produce this environment. So I'll leave you with a number of links here. You can check out the uh, um, Ansible DevOps tool toolbox here, a DevOps toolbox, box, GitHub IO Docs, uh, which is a set of roles I've created for various OS image build processes. You can check out the uh, uh, OS image builder on GitHub, and you can check out the virtualization collection available on Galaxy. Uh, if you want to use Ansible to uh, also perform the KVM, um, installation. You can check out some of the roles here from uh, Rahagav. Uh, with that being said, thank you very much for your time. This has been Mihai Kibeti. You can check me out on Twitter or LinkedIn if you want to have a conversation. And uh, thank you very much.